Hello viewers, so we are now taking you through the story for A Level Physics Paper 1. And this video we are going to go through the topic of photoelectric emission. So this video is suitable for students in both Senior 5 and Senior 6 offering physics as part of their combination. So before we proceed, let us look at the course outline of this paper. So physics paper 1 is divided into three parts. The first part is mechanics where four questions come from these topics and the second part is heat where three questions come from these topics and the third part is modern physics where three questions come from these topics and a student is expected to choose any five so we have already looked at radioactivity and now we are going to look at photoelectric emission this video we are mainly concentra concentrating on the calculation part of it, but the clear notes, worked examples, and trial questions of all the parts of Physics Paper 1 are available in this book, Mastering A Level Physics Paper 1. So if you need a copy, contact the author on any of these two contacts. And a complete set of physics has three books. One is Physics Paper 1, which I've shown you. Next is physics paper 2 and the last one is physics topical question bank. And if you do principal math, there is also math paper 1, math paper 2 and a topical question bank. If you do subsidiary mathematics, it is only one book. And the rest are for all level, all level physics and all level math. So if you need any copy, contact the author on any of these two contacts. So now shall start our topic of photoelectric emission. So by definition, this is the emission of electrons from the metal surface when electromagnetic radiations of a frequency greater than the frequ threshold frequency of that metal falls on it. So threshold frequency is the minimum frequency for photoelectric emission to occur. So when the frequency is less than this threshold frequency, there will be no emission. But if it is greater, then photoelectric emission will occur. So this type of emission can be demonstrated using a gold leaf electroscope. So let's first illustrate that so this is a gold level microscope this is a clean zinc plate which is negatively charged metal cap, gold leaf, and UV radiations. So these UV radiations have a frequency. And this zinc metal, metal plate has a threshold frequency. Now, if this frequency of the radiations is greater than the threshold frequency of this zinc metal plate, then photoelectric emission will occur. Electrons will be emitted from the surface. However, if this frequency is smaller than the threshold frequency of this zinc metal plate, then em electrons will not be emitted. In other words, there will not be photoelectric emission. So in this experiment, in this experiment a well clean zinc plate is connected to a negatively charged gold leaf electroscope so that is why the zinc plate also became negatively charged the zinc plate is then illuminated with uv light from a lamp in a dark room so this is the uv radiations we saw in the illustration the leaf of the electroscope will be seen to fall gradually 
indicating loss of charge due to emission of electrons. So if you go back to this diagram, so this was negatively charged and this was negatively charged. In other words, it had, it had electrons here. But when this radiation falls on this plate, this leaf is seen to fall, meaning some negative charges are being lost from the gold leaf. And they are being lost because of photoelectric emission at this zinc plate. So this fall of the gold leaf is what demonstrates the presence of photoelectric emission. But more explanations is, will be found in the book. Here we are interested in the in what can drive us into the calculations. Remember, on this video we are interested in the calculations. So whatever theory we write is to enable us to understand the calculations better. So there are some terms which we need to know under this topic of photoelectric emission. One is a photon. So a photon is a discrete packet of energy. Know this word, discrete. Packet of energy carried by an electromagnetic radiation. So discrete means it cannot be a fraction. It is a whole number. One, two, three, like that. So it is a discrete packet of energy. It cannot send one and a half packets of energy. No, it has to send whole numbers. Then two is Planck's theory. So Planck's theory states that the energy of a photon is directly proportional to its frequency. So mathematically we can say E, which is energy, is directly proportional to F, which is frequency. And when you put a constant of proportionality, it will become E equal to HF. And that H is what we call Planck's constant. Remember, this is Planck's theory, so the constant will be called Planck's constant. And it has a constant value, which is 6.6 .6 exponent negative 34 joules second. So this, this value will also be given in the question, so there's no need to memorize it. The next is work function. Work function is the minimum amount of work done or energy required to take a free electron out of the surface of a metal against the attractive forces of the positive ions. So work function is, is given by, this is noted by, this omega naught is what denotes work function. So when you see omega naught, just know it is work function and is given by HF naught. And this F naught is the threshold frequency. I think you remember that in the definition of photoelectric emission. So what is this threshold frequency? So another word for threshold frequency is cutoff frequency. And this is the minimum frequency of an incident radiation required to liberate an electron from the surface of a metal below which no emission occurs so below this threshold frequency emission cannot occur the threshold frequency f naught is equal to c over lambda naught so this lambda naught is the wavelength at threshold frequency and c is the speed of light in a vacuum so this is also a constant c is also a constant and is equal to 3x minute 8 and it's also given in the question the another term which we need to know is the stopping potential 
So this is the least negative. Know this word negative. So always will be negative. Negative potential that can stop all the electrons emitted at the cathode by the photo cell. Therefore, if V S is the threshold, so is the stopping potential, it implies that for you to get this value of stopping potential, you should remember that maximum kinetic energy is equal to E times V S. So the whole of this denotes maximum kinetic energy, and M denotes the mass of the photoelectron emitted. And V max denotes the maximum velocity or maximum speed of the photoelectrons emitted. Then E is the electronic charge and Vs is the stopping potential. So this E is a constant. It's also given in the question. Me is the constant. It is given in the question. Then that means that if you know V max, you can get the stopping potential. Then another term is quantum theory. So quantum theory states that light is emitted or absorbed in discrete packets. I think you remember that word under photons. In discrete packets of energy called photons. So photons are discrete packets of energy. And according to quantum theory, when light is incident on a metal surface, each photon interacts with only one electron. So each photon interacts with only one electron on the surface of the metal, giving it all its energy. So if that energy is less, it means the electron will not be emitted. So a photon is absorbed if its energy is greater than the work function. Remember, work function is HF0, also the minimum energy required for emission to occur. So if its energy is greater than the work function of the metal, and it will be absorbed. But if it is not, it will be rejected. So this electron can absorb that photon if its energy is greater than the work function. And when it absorbs it, then the electron will be emitted. If it rejects the photon, then the electron will remain on the metal surface. So what does that mean? It means that for this, if this is the plate, and this is the electron, and this is the radiation, it means that this radiation, the energy, so, so this photon in the radiation will come and if it is absorbed, the electron will be emitted. What does that mean? It means that part of the energy was work function to enable it to be absorbed by the electron. Another energy was for kinetic energy for it to move with a certain speed. Therefore, part of the energy is used to overcome the nuclear attraction of the electron so this work function is enables us to emit this electron so to enable us to destroy the nuclear attraction of the electron to the metal surface and the rest becomes the kinetic energy of the photo electron so the rest is what determines the speed with which the electron is emitted so that means that mathematically we shall say that this is the photon energy energy of the photon and it will be equal to the sum of the work function plus the kinetic energy with which the photo the electron is emitted so a photon comes with this energy and part of it is taken by work function to destroy the nuclear attraction another one is taken by kinetic energy to enable it to move with a certain speed now this formula is very vital and that's what we shall be using in this to in this video 
So as what I've been saying, this is the photon energy, this is the work function, and this is the maximum kinetic energy. So, but we already know that maximum kinetic energy is equal to E V times V S. That means that if I substitute where there was maximum kinetic energy, I can put there E times V S to come up with that equation. Then also remember that work function is equal to HF naught. Therefore, if I substitute for this work function here, I realize that this and this are common. H is common, so I can factorize it out to come up with this expression. So this is a, what I'm doing. I'm just rearranging the formula, the expression which you have already seen in the previous slide. So for an, an electromagnetic radiation, C is equal to a from a from that where this is frequency and this is wavelength. Therefore, when I substitute and I eliminate F, it means that here it will be 1 over lambda and this will be 1 over lambda naught. So now that we have looked at the formulas or the formula, we shall go to the worked examples. So now in, the, in these worked examples, the constants will always be given in the question. So electronic charge or electron charge is given by that value. Electron mass has that value. Planck's constant has that value. And speed of light in vacuum has that value. So these constants are vital and they will help us more in the calculations we shall do. So the first one is came from your name, 2010, paper 1, question 9D. And it says... Sodium has a work function of 2 electron volt and is illuminated by a wavelength of 150 nanometer. Calculate the maximum speed of the emitted electrons. So here we shall come and first write what is given. We have work function and also wavelength. That we shall quote our formula HC over lambda to denote the photon energy is equal to work function plus maximum kinetic energy. Then we shall come and substitute. So nanometer means 10 to power negative 9. That is why 150 nanometer becomes 150 x to negative 9 meter. Therefore, we shall come and substitute H, which is a constant, C, which is a constant, lambda, which is given here, equal to. 2 electron volt, but work function has been used. So to convert to juice, you multiply by the electron charge. So it will be 2 times 1.6 exponent negative 9, negative 19. Then this is a half. Me is the mass of an electron. We have it in the constants. And V max squared is the unknown. So next is use the calculator to simplify both sides. So simplifying the left hand side gives you this. And simplifying the right hand side gives you this. Add this and this to give you this. Then from there, make this the subject to come up with that by taking this on this side. Then put square root on both sides to come up with Vmax as that, and that's what they wanted. Then question 2 came from UNEB, 2014, paper 1, question 9b, Roman 2, and says, When a clean surface of metal in a vacuum is irradiated with light of wavelength this, electrons just emerge from the surface. However, when the light of wavelength this is incident on the metal surface, electrons are emitted at each with energy this. Find the value of Planck's constant. Now this word just emerge means that this one is the wavelength at threshold frequency. That would be lambda naught. And this will be the wavelength of the photon or the photon. So, yeah, come here and first interpret. This is lambda naught, this is lambda, and this is Ke max, kinetic energy. Then you, can, you shall quote the formula. I think you also remember this expression. 
if f is eliminated then you can write in like in this form so hc in brackets 1 over lambda minus 1 over lambda naught is equal to ke max next is to so you code the formula then you substitute so you have to substitute h now here we shall not substitute for h because it is the value they want c is a constant substitute for it lambda is a, is a, is that and this is that then this kind of energy maximum is here so substitute so that means that we only have h as the only unknown therefore we shall look for movement of making the subject first of all simplifying the whole of this gives you this and this one means as it is then you make h the subject to come up with the value of h which they want Then question 3 came from UNEB 2018 paper 1 question 10D and it says the photoelectric work function of a potassium is 2.25 electron volt. Light having a wavelength of 316 millimeter falls on a potassium metal. Roman 1. Calculate the stopping potential and Roman 2. Calculate the speed of the most energetic electron emitted by the metal. So first thing to do is to code the formula. Photon energy is equal to work function plus maximum kinetic energy. Then you substitute H is a constant, C is a constant, wavelength is here. It was in millimeters, so you convert to meters work function it was in electron volt so you convert to juice by multiplying by electron charge then this is electron charge times vs so vs is the only unknown therefore we shall look for, for making it the subject the whole of this gives you this and this gives you this and this remains that then take this this side to come up with that so it's now a negative then make Vs the subject to come up with negative 2.250 volt. Remember we said stopping potential is always a negative potential. So then here the answer should be a negative. That is Roman 1. Then Roman 2, calculate the speed of the most energetic electron emitted by the metal. So you know that maximum kinetic energy is equal to EVS. That was your common substitute. Substitute for mass, which is a constant. V max is what they want. E is the electronic charge, which is constant. And this one, you've got it. So here, we don't put a negative. Then simplify. Make this one the subject. Then put square root on both sides. And that would be the maximum speed. Then question 4 came from your name. 2009 paper 1 question 9c and says a 100 mil, milliwatt beam of light of wavelength this falls on, uh, on cesium surface of a photocell. Roman 1. How many photons strike the cesium surface per second? Then Roman 2, if 65% of the photon emit photoelectrons, find the resulting photocurrent. And Roman 3, calculate the kinetic energy of each photon if the work function of cesium is 2.2 electron volt. So we shall start with Roman 1, how many photons strike the cesium surface per second? So you have power which is in milliwatts, so you convert to watts, which is zero, by dividing by a thousand to give you 0 0.1 watts. Then the wavelength and the work function. So photon energy, it is given by this. I think we all know that. It's HC over lambda. So substitute for H, substitute for C, 
and substitute for lambda to give you this as the photon energy. So number of photons reaching the surface per second. So this will be the surface and this will be the photons. will be given by power of the beam over photon energy. And when you substitute for power is here, and photon energy is here. Therefore, when I divide, I'll come up with this as the number of photons reaching the surface per second. That was Roman 1. What about Roman 2? Roman 2, they said, if 65% of the photon emitted, of the photon emit photoelectrons, find the resulting photo current. So this means that on this surface, photons will come, but some of them will have a frequency less than the threshold frequency. Therefore, when they reach here, some electrons will be emitted, but others will not. And they have told us that the percentage is 65%. So that means that the number of photoelectrons emitted per second will be 65% of the total photons. So 65% is 65 over 100 times the total, which is here we got, to give you these photoelectrons. And that number of electrons per second is denoted by nt, small n to denote num to number of photoelectrons and t to denote the time in seconds. So we know that chu is equal to it, but we also know that chu is equal to ne. Therefore, if I rearrange, I'll come up with i being equal to n over t times e. And we really saw that this is the number of photoelectrons emitted per second which is this, and this is a constant, which is that. So it's multiplied to come up with that as a photo current. Then Roman 3, Roman 3 says calculate the kinetic energy of each photon if the work function of cesium is 2.2. So you shall call the formula photon energy is equal to work function plus maximum kinetic energy. Then come and substitute. Photon energy, we already got it. Work function is here. It was an electron volt to convert to joules. And this is the unknown. So make Ke max the subject and that will be the kinetic, maximum kinetic energy. Then question 5 came from UNEB, 2015, paper 1, question 9b, and it says, In a photoelectric setup, a point source of light of power, this, emits mono-energetic photons of energy 5 electron volt. The source is located at a distance of 0 0.8 meters from the center of a stationary metallic sphere of work function 3 electron volt and of radius 8 x minus negative 3 meters. The efficiency of photoelectron emission is 1 in every 10 to power 6. 1 in every 10 to power 6 means 1 over 10 to power 6. Incident photons. Calculate Roman 1 the number of photoelectrons emitted per second and Roman 2 the maximum kinetic energy in joules of the photoelectrons. So here we shall first illustrate. So we have a source and we also have a metallic sphere of radius small r, let the radius be small r and this distance between the source and the sphere to be capital R, which is 0 0.8. 
So now this source emits photons in all directions. That means that it will enclose what we call a sphere. From whose radius will be from here up to the center of the other sphere. So this is, a, a, this is an imaginary sphere where electrons reach. But they want only a fraction. Only a fraction of the total photons emitted will reach the sphere. Therefore we have to get that fraction. So shall come and say that the number of photons emitted by the source per second are power over photon energy. I think we already know that formula. Power over photon energy. Power is that. Photon energy is that. It was 5 electron volt, but we convert to juice to give you that as the number of photons emitted by the source from here per second. The number of photons incident on the sphere, like I told you, it is only a fraction. That will show us that the number of photons incident on the sphere will be pi r squared over 4 pi r capital R squared times the total number of photons, which is 4 times 10 to the power negative 10 to power 15. Now, here, if you realize they are using formula for area of a circle, and yet the formula is for area of surface area of a sphere. Why is it so? It is because if these photons from the source are to hit this sphere here and you look from this side, observe from that side, you realize that what you will see will be just a circle. To be a circle which will be covered. That is why we use area of a circle for the fraction where photons reach. And the total area will remember these ones emit in all directions. Therefore, the this imaginary sphere will be will have a surface area where photons will reach. That is why we use surface area here. So always remember, numerator will be area of a circle whose radius is the distance between the two objects, source and sphere, and the denominator will be area of the imaginary sphere which is this so substitute pi is okay so substitute for small r and for capital r then use the calculator to get the final answer which they want so those will be the number of photons incident what about the number of photoelectrons so photons are the ones which are incident onto the metal surface then photoelectrons are the electrons which are emitted from the metal surface. Therefore, the number of photoelectrons emitted from the surface per second will be, we use the efficiency, which was 1 over 10 to power 6, times the total, which is 1 exponent 11, to give you 1 exponent 5 electrons. Then Roman 2, Roman 2, they want the maximum kinetic energy in joules of the photoelectrons. So here the first thing to do is to is to code the formula photon energy is equal to work function plus maximum kinetic energy then you substitute h hf now this photon energy was given in terms of electron volt the, and it was 5 electron volt meaning that when i convert it to juice it would be 5 times electron charge which is 1.6 x1 negative 19. work function was also given in terms of electron volt it was 3 electron volts, so to convert it to juice to give you that. So I remain with this as the only unknown. Making it the subject will give me that as the value they wanted.
so that brings us to the end of this video thanks for watching and be reminded the next video will be on the model of an atom so if you have not yet subscribed please click on the subscribe button below this video so that you can receive updates when the next video has been uploaded and also if you know any student who is not yet on this platform please share the link of this video with them via social media platform like facebook and whatsapp so that you can co-benefit us a family